there's somebody in here now, uh, you're dealing with bitterness. Yeah. Come on, y'all. Y'all come on and say amen. amen. Uh, they got to this place and, 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 and they, they needed water to drink. No water. But the water they found, they could not drink it because it was bitter. Yes. So they were having a bitter experience. And somebody today, because of the fact that after God has blessed you, you've done well in life, right. some things came against you. Uh, some dark clouds arose in your life. Somebody say amen. amen. Storms of life started raging. And there was trouble in your house. Amen. Trouble in your family. Come on, y'all. Could have been trouble in terms of your health, your finances, and, and, and look like I ought to be doing better than what I'm doing. Has anybody, you don't have to raise your hand, but have any of you ever felt like you ought to be doing better Amen. than what you're doing? Amen. If you're not careful, the devil will start whispering you and talking to you. And I told you this morning, we are creatures of emotion. We have, we are people that have emotions and sometimes we can be on an emotional roller coaster, feeling good one day and go down, amen. amen. Feeling bad another day, come back up and go back down again. Yeah. Down in the valley, the valley of despair. And if you're not careful, you can become bitter. And when bitterness is there, you have a negative outlook on life. When you have a negative outlook on life, you're going to become grouchy. You're going to become fussy. Come on, y'all. Amen. Amen. You can begin to lash out at people. Amen. Amen. You're upset. You're sad. Look like look like the sun will never shine again. Look like it's always raining. And so you, you come, you, you, come, you end up with a negative attitude. Don't Amen. believe that anything going to get any better. And then in your bitterness, if you're not careful, are y'all hearing what I'm saying? In your bitterness, if you're not careful, you can become jealous of other folk. You know, you're down here, and you're down in the valley, and it all got to be here. But why is it that my neighbor is doing better? Why is it that my friend is doing better? And if you're not careful, the devil will put a jealous spirit in you that will cause you to snap at even your friends and folk that even love. Come on, y'all. Come on, come on. If you're not careful because of what is happening, particularly if somebody did you wrong, bitterness will grip your heart. And if you don't get rid of the bitterness, and the way you get rid of bitterness, bitterness is through forgiveness. If you won't forgive and bitterness take, takes hold of the heart, bitterness will turn into hate. And you find yourself in a bad place. All because now I'm just tired. Tired of folk walking on me. Tired of taking stuff. I've been nice all my life. I've done what I need to do. But oh, I'm just tired of where I am. Look at hands of Lord, have your way. Come on against the Lord, have your way. I want you to know that in your bitter situations, if you will look to the Lord, if you will look toward heaven, and I know, amen, the thing that you're going through may not disappear immediately, but if you will look to the Lord, God has a way of bringing you out. Did y'all hear what I said? If I hold on to God's unchanging hand, He will surely bring me through this. Look at the children of Israel. They were complaining and the water was bitter. But they did not know just a few miles further up the road. They would come to a place called Elam. And in the place of Elam, it was a place with 12 wells and 70 palm trees. It was a small paradise. And so what I'm trying to tell you, that if things are bitter now, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. If I can just hold on, if I can just hold out, help is on the way. Yeah. If I stay with the Lord, I'm going to make it to my Elam, a place of a small paradise. That's why the songwriter wrote the song, I'm so glad that trouble doesn't last always. Right. Lift your hand and tell God thank you. Thank you, Lord. Does anybody really believe? Does anybody accept it? Do you know that trouble won't last always? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're going through a situation right now. You can praise God now. 
You can shout now. You can shout before the battle is over. Because I'm assured that God is going to deliver me. Come on, clap your hand and give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So they came to heal them. And of course, they couldn't stay in Elam because they're on their way to the promised land. But I want you to look at the pattern. Victory comes, then trouble comes. Victory, then trouble comes. You need to know that you're in a spiritual battle. Oh, yes. Say amen, everybody. Amen. Chapter 16, when they left Elam, uh, they, they're moving through the wilderness. And uh, they get to a place, they started grumbling and mumbling because they didn't have any food to eat. Yes. But look at God. Yes. God has everything under control. God is such a God from heaven. So, so the, the bread began to drop out of heaven. And when it didn't have meat to eat, later on, he sent the quails uh, there to fly in the camp, amen, to provide meat. And so here it is that God provides for their need. But in chapter 17, we read with verse 8, uh, but at the beginning of chapter 17, they moved further in the wilderness. They came to a place that's called Rephidim. Yeah. And again, there is no water. Now, and I begin to look at that, that term, Rephidim. You know what Rephidim means? Rephidim means rest. Have to say rest. Yeah, it means rest, but it means resting place. And some of you, amen, have gotten to your Rephidim, and, and, and you know that it's supposed to be a place of rest. I, I, I'm supposed to be now in a place of comfort. Things ought to be better. But when I got the record dim, amen, there's no water. Here again, there is no water in the resting place. And so they start complaining again. But I thank God, amen, that he does not bless us, amen, because uh, we've been so good. And some of y'all know you have not been so good. And I'm not saying that in here. These folks were mumbling and complaining and grumbling. And the, the two be told, many of us complained. Many of us grumble and mumble instead of thanking God for what we already have. Instead of thanking God uh, the fact that he has healed us, uh, that he has delivered us. Uh, and instead of thanking God uh, for not letting the tornado hit us on yesterday. Come on, y'all. Y'all come on and say amen. Instead, instead of thanking God for, for keeping our children, keeping our family members. You, know, you see, all of our children, they're not grown. And you know, my youngest son, the youngest one, he's in college and he's spending more time in Valley. And, and he's traveling. He's traveling on the highways and, and coming here at certain times. And when he gets to the house, I say, Lord, I thank you. For sparing him. Let them, let them make it on the highway. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. My wife goes to Arkansas every day, traveling about 50 miles a day. And my, my daughter, uh, Carmen, amen, she lives behind that with her husband. She's traveling every day to work. And I, I pray in the morning. Uh, when, when, when the alarm clock goes off, my wife gets ready to go to work. I pray, I God, for traveling mercy for her and my daughter. And then I start praying for you all, because many of you all are traveling. On your job, digging long, or they drive trucks on, you know, through the night and part of the morning. And you got to go to work right here in town, in this city. And I pray for you all, but at, at night and in the evening, Lord, I thank you for keeping my family. Lord, I thank you for keeping the church rather. Thank you for bringing the children the cheer to go to school and returning home to us in hand. Oh, you got to read the praise God. It's time to stop running and bumping and complaining. Because the Lord has been good to us. Somebody shout hallelujah right now. Come on and shout hallelujah. But in spite of our grumbles and our mumbling and complaining, look at what God did. God gave Moses some instruction. He said, take the rod that you got and strike the rock. Amen. And when Moses hit that rock right in, in front of the eyes, water came out of a dry rock. Oh, what a miracle. What a victory. That's why the choir to see the song, victory is in Jesus. I want you to know that rock typified Jesus. Oh, come on and praise God. By the fact that Jewish legends say that after they found that rock, that the rock followed them. Well, Paul, the 
even talked about the rock over the New Testament following them in the wilderness. And many people believe that the rock literally went from place to place. The rock had the water that they needed. And I'm trying to tell you instead of complaining and being ungrateful, take your need to Jesus. And as you take your need to Jesus, you ought to give him thanks. You ought to praise him for who he is. He is God. He is our deliverer. He is our healer. He is our way maker. Come on, clap your hand again and praise him right now. I don't hear that. Praise God right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But as we look at chapter 17, you find out that the Lord, that greatest encounter has not happened. They had gone into, they had, they had some situations. The situation of not having water. The situation of having bitter water. There were times they did not have food. That sounds like some of us. Some of you have testified there were times when I didn't have food. There were times when I didn't have other things. But God brought you out. God brought you through. But after he brought you through, you celebrated your success. Here comes the devil again. The devil does not like it when you give God a praise. The devil does not like when you give God credit. So he wants to come with some other problems and other issues. I wonder will they still give God a praise. I wonder will they still go to church and magnify the Lord. I wonder will they yet go to choir rehearsal and prepare to sing on Sunday morning. I wonder will they yet go to the Bible study. Amen. And give comments of how great God is. So look at what they to them in chapter 17. When they get to chapter 17, they run into one of their worst problems. And the problem would be in the nation of Amalek or the Amalekites. Somebody tell God thank you. Somebody tell God thank you. I want you to know that the Amalekites were forced to be reckoned with. They were nomadic, warlike people from southern Canaan. They were Somebody say amen. And so when you read the, the, the story, you find over in Deuteronomy chapter 25, that talks about the same thing that happens in Exodus chapter 17. You find out that the Amalekites, when they attacked, they came from the rear. And the reason they came to the backside of the camp of Israel. In the rear, you had sick. You had those who were feeble. You had the aged members of Israel. The little children were at the rear. It looked like if you were going to fight, you would man up and fight the strongest. But I want you to know, just like they didn't fight fair, the devil is not going to fight fair. When the devil gets you down, he wants to keep you a little bit hard. He will attack your health. And when he attacks your health, look like the car, the transmission goes out. The hot water tank plays out. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I said, does anybody know what I'm talking about? Trouble in our homes. Trouble on the job. Oh, he's not going to fight fair. He's out to destroy you. He's out to work.
same issue. Ha. David had trouble with the same folks. Ha. In 1 Samuel chapter 30, ha. thank you, Jesus. Ha. David had left ha. the town he was relying in. Ha. And while he was gone, ha. while he was gone from Ziklag, ha. it was the same folks, ha. the Amalekites, ha. that came to the city, ha. took his family, his wives, ha. took all possessions. Not only David, but his 600 men. When the men came back, they cried until they could cry no more. They were so angry, so hurt, that they wanted to strong David. David can tell you that we were tired. I was a tired man. Journey. It was a time. 
tears too, because she fell at his feet and started weeping. Yes. You know, culture says she wasn't supposed to touch him, but she did. It touched his heart. To make a long story short, he went to the house and prayed. Yes. And God gave her son back to him. Raised him from the dead. Hallelujah. David, who was so tired, cried until he couldn't cry no more. He is asking. David prayed, Lord, what shall I do? Shall I pursue? Shall I go out there? And the Lord said, Pursue, and thou shalt recover all. Thank you, Jesus. When we get tired, you ought to have a prayer meeting with Jesus. Tell him all about your trouble. Tell him how you feel. He doesn't live far from Jackson. He quickly went down and started praying. Yeah. And God turned that thing around. But when he began to pray, God lifted the spirit of Elder Lewis. Kept Sister Lewis. We could be helpers one to another. You see, when, listen, let me say this. Somebody need to hear it. When you get tired, you need to come to the house of the Lord. When you're burdened, you're at your lowest point, you need to come to the house of the Lord. The saints will gather around me and start praying. And God will hear our cry. Yes, yes. Do y'all believe that? Yes. The prayer of the righteous of very much. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody tell God. 